Welcome to Hold Fast Radio, Ride Out Life with Mental Illness. You too, ladies and gentlemen, can stay afloat in this ever-cycling existence. Stay tuned. Oh, yes. Welcome to Hold Fast Radio. Happy 2021. Woo! Today I have an absolutely fabulous uh, guest. And we will talk to her in just a moment. In, in the interim, I want to play 3 minutes and 46 seconds of an amazing new artist. I don't know if she's new. But she's new to me, Arlo Parks, a London girl, Black Dog. The song is off the charts. Love it. Enjoy it. Black Dog. What a gorgeous song and what an amazing guest I have today, ladies and gentlemen. May I introduce 
without further ado, Good afternoon, everybody. Happy 2021. I can't believe it. Holy Hannah. And do we ever have somebody extraordinary to talk to today? Somebody who I am so pleased to have on the show. Mrs. Carolyn Raynock Wolf is an executive partner in the law firm of Abrams Fest uh, Fensterman, I almost said Festerman, Carolyn, and director of the firm's mental health law practice. It's rare, and she's a rare family-focused mental health attorney um, specializing in guiding families through the complex landscape that you and I all know about and everybody that listens to this show, Mental Health News Radio, Hold Fast News. Hold Fast Radio right at Life with Bipolar Disorder and Mental Illness in general. And uh, it sure is complex. The landscape of legal issues that impact loved ones with serious mental illness and or substance abuse issues, which is in and of itself a whole nother can of worms, isn't it, Carolyn? Oh, it sure is. Oh, God. Uh, she also represents institutions such as hospitals skilled nursing facilities and uh, outpatient programs, as well as mental health and um, healthcare professionals. Oh, and higher educational institutions. She has been profiled, ladies and gentlemen, by the New York Times and regularly contributes to psychology today. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce? Oh, woo <laughs> oh, thank you, Amanda. It's really a pleasure to be here. And uh, thank you for inviting me and for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Happy New Year to you and yours. You as well. Thank you. I'm sure it was a very busy ending to the year for you. Yes, it has been. And it's <laughs> nice to see 2020 in the rearview mirror, oh, as been said. As I, I, I agree. 1000 fold it is so good to see it in hindsight so carolyn can i call you that absolutely wonderful carolyn it is such a pleasure to have her ladies and gentlemen and listeners of hold fast radio because carolyn like i described is a rarity and somebody that you only dream of <laughs> having the pleasure of knowing if you are a bipolar person or a person with mental illness or substance abuse and have made some irrational decisions perhaps in the back and perhaps you need legal assistance. As we know, she represents not only the person, tell me if I have this right, Carolyn, but the loved ones who deal with the person who is struggling. Am I correct? Yes, actually that's the majority of clients initially are working with the families of someone um, in their family or neighbors or friends or anyone, you know, they have a relationship with who have a serious mental health issue or substance abuse or even mental health issues related possibly to a medical issue. So, you know, it can come from a variety of reasons, um, but it's mostly the families I work with initially, although there are times when I work directly with the individual, him or herself. Mm. Wow. That is super fascinating. Um, and now I'm writing, it's fun, you know, I'm talking to you from the perspective of a mentally quote unquote ill person who has taken my life and dedicated it to advocacy and writing to help the mentally ill because I have this sort of perspective. I've been there and I've overcome, I have not overcome mental illness, but I am content with the discontent, if you know what I'm talking about. So to be able to talk to somebody who sees both sides, like yourself, is really important. And you, what you do is a real gift to a lot of families who have absolutely no idea what to do. So I thank you, first and foremost. Thank you. And um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's my pleasure. And it's been my life's work for over 30 years. So I've been doing it a while. Wow. Um, and I'll keep doing it because I, I believe it's great work and I have an amazing staff around me who, um, you know, who also do great work and are very dedicated uh, attorneys and, and human beings. Wow. Um, Carolyn, the question that's been burning in my mind since I first talked to you and we decided to do this show and talk to Sharon, um, your publicist, um, 
is how, the how of the story. How did you get involved in this facet of law? It's a question I get asked a lot, <laughs> for sure. Um, it, it's, in a way, it's happenstance, and it's also, you know, having been approached by families and seeing a need. I, um, I actually started out as a hospital administrator. I was a hospital risk manager at one of the big city hospitals in New York, mm-hmm. um, and because I'd always wanted to go to law school, it, I kind of reached a crossroads, and Um, I ended up going to law school, and when I finished law school, having had all the hospital contacts that I did from my risk management and administrator years, I was asked to do commitment hearings for hospitals in New York. Um, In New York, as in most other states um, across the country, patients who are on an inpatient psychiatric unit have a right to a hearing if they want to be discharged or released. And they have a right to challenge uh, an order for um, medication. They have a right to go to court and um, for the hospital to get a court order should a patient be refusing treatment. And while I was doing these hearings for hospitals, which actually is still the mainstay of of my practice, um, I would be prepping families or meeting families in court or speaking with families who would say, you know, this is all very nice that my son, daughter, sister, brother, husband, wife are in the hospital now and getting treatment, but what happens after? It's a very challenging, complicated system. Uh, You know, there aren't a lot of resources. They're going to come back home or come back into our lives, and we just have no idea what to do and how to navigate through the healthcare system, the mental health system, often the criminal justice system, you know, the legal system in general. And I saw a need and I thought, you know, this is something that could be really useful and helpful to families, um, given that I had a a pretty substantial healthcare background and, you know, now a law degree and and legal experience. So it, it was sort of the coming together of everything that I had been doing up until that point, seeing a need and, you know, just going forward with it. Gosh, it's incredible. Talk about a purpose, like everything braiding together, just, uh, just to, you were meant to do that, Carolyn, do you agree? (laughs) I don't know if I was meant to do it, but it's, I certainly love what I do. And I truly believe we good, we do good things for people in the world. Um, It's also, it's a very diverse practice because it's not just law. It's a lot of clinical information, clinical input. I have a team um, that I collaborate with who are psychiatrists, psychologists, case managers, social workers. Um, So we have a whole host of resources that we can bring to bear, you know, with cases that um, we're asked, you know, to work on. Wow, that was actually my next question. I wanted to I wanted to ask you if you could elaborate on the team. I know, having been in situations where I was hospitalized, when you're in that state of mind and your family really doesn't know what to do, there really is a, a sense of hopelessness that surrounds the illness or you know the, the situation, especially when it seems as if um, you feel like you are at the mercy of the doctors and nurses who are helping you when actu- in actuality you're not and you have a choice and there is a, a human aspect to you are a human being and that is something that is so overlooked in mental health as you know and the the stick the stigmata that is attached to mental illness and people say oh what do i do and so they take the drug that the doctor gives them or you know they listen to what the nurse says and the parents or the family or the caretakers or the loved ones who take this person out of the hospital when their stint is done are left with their hands up. So I'm really fascinated by that aspect, how you, you and your team facilitate this. How do you do it? How do you help these people? You must have you build a very personal relationship. 